Hey, I'm Andrew, and in this video, I'm gonna show you three things that completely transformed both my home studio and even better, my workflow. But they're not what you would think. I was lucky enough to work at one of the greatest commercial recording studios for over five years, doing literally hundreds of sessions per year. When I was there, I got to work with artists like Justin Timberlake, John Legend, James Blake, Weezer, Dawes, Ghost, Sum 41, and hun literally hundreds more. I learned a ton about running sessions with just about every style of music in almost every situation. And I'm gonna share with you how I use these ideas in my current home studio and how you can take them and implement them into your studio and your workflow. All right, so what is it that makes a home studio or a project recording studio or even a commercial, whatever you want to call it, recording studio work well? What do you mean work well? work well at what? Recording, tracking, are you using live instruments? Are you talking about just using virtual instruments with MIDI controllers or just a vocal? Or are you talking about mixing? Or are you talking about mastering? How the studio works and how well it works is obviously gonna depend on what it is that you're trying to do. All right, let's try to unpack that a little bit. What specifically is it that can make a studio work well or more efficiently? Is it gear? Do you need to have an insane amount of gear? Is it instruments? Is it <laughs> snacks? <laughs> is it coffee? I mean, those things can't hurt. But realistically, it's gonna be a lot of different things that make a studio work well and work efficiently and at the quality that you're trying to do. The first thing, and this is probably gonna surprise you, is comfort. Why does comfort matter to a studio? Well, because one, if you're in a studio, you're spending a lot of time in that place. Also, you're trying to ride this line of doing professional work or what you hope is professional work and also make creative decisions. For me personally, I've gotta be comfortable in this space to be able to do either of those things. If the, I'm in a room that's not comfortable, one, I'm not gonna to wanna to be in there for very long, and two, the work I do is probably not gonna be that good. So comfort is number one. Now that's gonna be a lot of very different things. That's kind of a subjective thing that you're gonna to have to figure out for yourself. But number two is going to be workflow. Now workflow is what whatever it is that you're doing in the studio, whether that's tracking, mixing, mastering, all three, writing, just doing production, tracks, whatever, that's up to you to figure out what your workflow is. For me personally, I'm doing a combination of recording live instruments, microphones on instruments, either with one performer or multiple performers, sometimes at the same time. I want to be able to do either of those situations and I want to do them at a high quality. Also, it's gotta look pretty good and it's gotta be able to be well lit because I actually love making videos too. I love recording, I love music, but I really love making videos. So number three is efficiency and quality. It needs to be as efficient as possible and how would I define efficiency? I, like how fast can we do it? Like the second I have the part, can we just grab it? Or do, is there like a whole- Oh, hold on, let me see what chant, what line is that on? Or do I have to send this? Do I have to make a patch? None of that. I want there to be almost zero downtime in between the creative spark that happens and actually capturing that moment, whether it's on an instrument or a vocal performance or on video or whatever it is. It's that efficiency and not only have it be efficient, but also be at a high quality. All right, now let's talk about the practical application. I'm gonna just use my room as a reference because we're here and I've basically gone to over a hundred something studios and seen a bunch of brilliant ideas and tried to incorporate them into my own space. And now I'll just show you a bunch of those things. So maybe it'll be helpful for you and you just watch this one video. All right, so if we look at the space as a whole, it's a pretty small room with a narrow ceiling above the garage of my house. The actual usable space of the room is 19 by 19 feet. However, it is an A-frame ceiling, so it's not all standable space, if you will. The outer sides of the room, I'm mostly just using as storage. So I have extra accessories, microphones, guitar pedals, different things that I 
sometimes need, but don't always need to have access to. Those are mostly kept on the outsides of the room and it's actually quite useful for that. Now the rest of the room is broken down into essentially a handful of different zones. Okay, so there's really like four zones that are actual tangible zones where things are happening. The first one is where I sit. Right here, right now, where I film my A-roll for my videos is where I can actually sit at my computer. I can run Pro Tools or Logic. I can do editing. I can edit my videos, obviously internet browsing, things like that. I can turn to my left and I'm facing my console and my speakers where I can do critical listening. I can adjust the input levels. And if I turn to my left another 45 degrees, I have two keyboard synthesizers slash MIDI controllers that we can use for writing and recording. I actually record sitting here. And when I mean record, I mean sometimes that's acoustic guitar, sometimes that's vocals, sometimes that's this dialogue mic right here for videos, and sometimes it's like percussion stuff that you're gonna record while you're sitting right at the computer. So all of those things are happening in zone, let's just call it one. All right, so up next is zone two. Zone two is a combination like zone one of several different things in one space. It's an open space that I can have a musician come in and sit down and they basically have access to a guitar pedal board, they have a whole amp wall, which has several different guitar amps, speakers, and a bass amp, depending on whether they're playing guitar or bass. And there's a headphone box, so they can plug right into headphones with an extension, ready to go. And there's plenty of space for them to comfortably sit down. There's not cables everywhere in the way. Everything's easily accessible. The way to access the rig is right in front of you on the floor. You just grab the cable, literally just plug in, and you can use the entire amp wall. It's awesome. There's also a table right there, so if a musician has like computer or phone or food or something they wanna set down, they can easily set it down and get to work. The idea here is to create a space for this musician who can come in and work and access everything they need, eliminating as much friction as possible. Moving on to zone three. Zone three is of course the drum set. Now this zone had to be very specific because I'm a drummer and I record myself playing drums all the time. So. I designed this zone to uh, cater towards my needs as someone who is the actual recording engineer and the musician and sometimes wearing too many hats. But to summarize it, either I or another drummer could come into this zone, sit down at the drum set, have access obviously to the kit, the sticks, percussion, everything they'd need to play the drums. There's a headphone box so you can plug in, you don't have to look for anything. There's also a sidecar, meaning a little table I got off Amazon that has some Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and an extra display so I can control the Pro Tools rig or the DAW that we're using for the day from the drum kit. And this is really, really nice to be able to do at the drum kit. Sometimes you're doing takes and it's just you and you can sit there and you can run the session while playing drums. And that is massively beneficial and keeps the sessions running extremely smooth. All right, moving on to zone four. Zone four is for the vocalist. Of course, we have a vocal mic there, obviously headphones, and there is a clear line of sight between me sitting at the desk as well as the vocalist and anyone else in the room. Now, I guess you could say this is sort of the last official zone. There's a couple other spaces that I use here in the room for different things, but these are sort of the main four zones that I would use for nearly everything. The only reason I would use the couple other spaces is if there was like six people in here, which doesn't happen that often. All right, here are a couple general ideas and products that I use to accomplish a comfortable, efficient, and high quality workflow in these specific zones. First is creating a unique space for either the artist or the musician to be comfortable when first arriving at the studio. Having simple accommodations like some bottles of water, some coffee, or a place to eat or keep some snacks definitely makes it feel more welcoming and comfortable so you can focus on the work. Each zone is set up in a way where a musician or an artist can either sit or stand. There's a place for them to set their phone and their things down and to keep like a drink or something near them that's a safe place for. 
for it. Also, generally, I like to break up each area with its own rug if there's the space. This gives a feeling of separation for everyone and also reduces noise within the room. There's a headphone box set up with a balance and levels, starting levels ready to go. There's also always an extension for the headphones, an adapter, and a pair of headphones ready to use. Each zone in the room is designed to accomplish a specific goal as efficiently as possible, meaning there's almost no setup time required. Over here in zone two where the guitar sits, there's a pedal board powered up. It's got a cable on it, so you can just grab the cable, plug right in. It's already routed to the amp, so the only decision you have to make is on which amp do you want to use. Once you decide on the amp, you simply move the cable to the amp that you're gonna use all of the cabinets are already mic'd up. The stands that I use are clamped directly to the cabinet, so the mic placement never changes. And because they're clamped, there's no floor space taken up and they're at no risk of being kicked or having the position moved by somebody walking by. Also, the stands are modular, so you can easily swap mics without having to move the stand or the placement of the clamp. Now, if we decide to not use a microphone on the amp, I have the Oxbox amp attenuator. And if you wanna use that, there's already a speaker cable ran right to the amp. So you just decide which amp you wanna use, connect that speaker cable to it, go straight to the Oxbox. Over in zone four, ideally it's set up for a vocalist, but we could also use it to record an acoustic instrument like an acoustic guitar, a ukulele, or even something like a violin. Just like the other zones, headphones are ready to go. There's a place to set some stuff down, personal items, as well as a music stand so you can put lyrics and sheet music down. And most importantly, a chair that doesn't make noise. All right, so part of what makes this small space work is actually the microphone stand that I'm using. Now, because it's in an area where I already have outboard racks filled with gear and it's behind some keyboard stands, there wasn't a lot of space for a traditional microphone stand that has a tripod base and takes up a lot of space on the floor. So I used another really intense clamp from Triad Orbit that holds this microphone stand up in the air, but the clamp is actually connected to my studio desk. This way I can still have a microphone over in this zone, but there's nothing on the floor that you can kick or that can get knocked over and that's out of the way, keeping as little clutter as possible visually, which matters a lot to me. Cool thing about the stand is I can actually adjust it so that it can be obviously at different heights and positions for the singer. We can lower it if someone's playing acoustic guitar, but I can also angle the stand over to the front side of the desk. So if I need to use that microphone for some reason, I can just reach over, adjust it, and pull it to my side of the desk. So it actually serves multiple zones, even though it's clamped to one side of the studio desk. So being able to use the microphone for vocals and that chain in two different spaces without having to move a big clunky stand around is a game changer for the workflow. Now these same concepts apply to both zones one, which is where I sit, and zone three, which is the drumming area. Both of these spaces have their own dedicated rugs, headphone access, a table to set things down. However, what's cool is both of these zones actually have the ability to control the main computer rig for the whole studio. Benefit of this is I can work from two different places within the studio without having to get up and walk back and forth, which I'm sure you've had experience doing before, and it sucks. Now in some sessions, I'll actually have someone sitting here that's not me, and I'll be at the drums so I can run the session while I sit there and they'll be playing something like maybe acoustic guitar or bass or keys or something like that, and we can actually all play at the same time. Other things that speed up the workflow in the drum zone is I have a bucket of percussion at hand's reach so I can quickly grab them and use them for overdubs. And then like I said, control the session and do those overdubs without having to get up. There's also spare drum heads and tools that are useful when you're drumming like a drum key, gaffer's tape, and drum modifiers like the big fat snare drum head modifiers, which if you are a drummer and have a studio and you don't have those, you should definitely check into those because those are massively helpful at getting sounds really fast. Now, another important part of these two zones is actually the path between them and between other zones as well. Having a clear path where there's no cables stretched across or stands in the way, which helps prevent accidents from happening when you're trying to just walk through the studio. I actually worked with Triad Orbit to design a couple of these systems to reduce as much clutter as possible and free up as much 
floor space in the room as possible. For the whole drum set, there's a total of three microphone stands holding all the mics. And then for the room mic over by the staircase, I have the room mics actually mounted to the wall. And what's cool is because it's modular, I can adjust it any possible way I would want to over there. And it's off the floor. So again, maximum floor space equals maximum happiness in my heart. A lot of times when producing and recording on my own, I do a lot of that work actually just sitting right here at my desk. I've always loved being able to have a microphone right next to me while I'm at my desk. So I have the ability to record, but also operate the session, turn, listen to the speakers without having to actually get up and move around. This is really, really fun when things are set up in an efficient way and all the things I need to use are actually accessible. Now the side table that I use here in zone one is very useful as it holds everything I need to control my computer as well as my hard drives, my fader controller for automation, but it also is height adjustable so I can stand up if I want to while I'm working and it's on wheels so I can turn and actually move the side table out of the way if somebody else wants to come in here and sit down and listen or sit here and record. I also have an additional mic stand clamped to the side table that's accessible when I want it, but I can also easily move it so that it's out of the way when I don't need it. One of my favorite things about the way this studio is laid out is all of the things I have set up are in use and pretty much get used on every single session. And part of what makes that possible is everything being set up and accessible at a moment's notice. A couple final thoughts that have always helped me are the planning of the layout of the studio, having a solid input sheet with all the mics, inputs, and patches on it, keeping each zone organized and simple to use so either the guest, client, musician, or yourself can actually feel comfortable and enjoy the music making process. Because if not, what are we even doing? If you're interested in some of the gear that I've got here in my studio, check the description for links to them. My current favorite addition to the studio are the Triad Orbit stand systems that are in each zone. I went ahead and made a list of all of the parts that I use to build these little systems in each zone. If you want to check that, I put a link to it as well down in the description. And a big thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. At the end of the day, if you made some music, it's a success. There are always ways to make improvements and as much as I love gear, the best gear that I can get gets out of the way of the music making process so you can stay in that nice clear state of flow without distractions. Do me a favor and let me know what makes your studio comfortable and efficient down below in the comments. I'll make sure to reply to your comments, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.